Valentine's Day, traditionally we hope for messages of love and support. But this morning, like many other mornings, my inbox was filled with nothing but messages of despondency and despair. Today I received a message from a 60-year-old British lady who's worked hard all her life, paid her taxes and her national insurance until four years ago when she became disabled. Despite being in receipt of disability living allowance, she has been deemed fit for work by the Work Capability Assessment and placed onto Job Seekers Allowance, where for the past four years, her local job centre staff have witnessed how hard she has fought to enter paid employment. Now, she is being forced to work 37 and a half hours a week, voluntarily, to receive her benefits. She tells me that she doesn't mind this, that in fact she's more than happy to contribute to society in return for her benefits, but that the work she is expected to do is heavy manual labour, gardening alongside young offenders and substance misusers. Work she is simply not capable of physically carrying out. If she doesn't comply with this work, she'll lose her job seekers allowance. If she does comply with this work, she risks further injury, or even being deemed ineligible for her disability living allowance because she's attempted to comply with rules for other benefits. Once this lady loses her disability living allowance, she will become homeless. The money is used to cover the shortfall in her rent in the private sector. She won't be entitled to local authority housing because she's older, but not old enough, because she's childless, and because there's simply a massive shortage of local authority housing. So, she faces a stark choice. She either complies with work that she's physically incapable of doing, or she risks losing her home. Once she loses her home, she is also likely to lose her eligibility for disability living allowance because she'll have no address. Once that happens, she'll no longer be able to pay for the prescription charges for the medications which keep her alive nor will she be able to keep her assistant's dog. So she will be living on the streets, without hearing, without assistance, without money, and quite understandably, she wishes to die instead of that. All this talk of the big society from David Cameron, himself the father and son of disabled men, is laudable, but it's also being used as a cover for the wholesale massacre of the welfare contract that the British people have with their state. Are we really saying that when the measure of an enlightened society is how it treats its most vulnerable, in this case sick and disabled people, that that is something that in 2011, in Britain, we are not capable of doing? To paraphrase, or perhaps cannibalise, the words of a far more eloquent disabled person than myself. Do not go gently into that dark night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light.